Hello, this is Praveen Mamaneni. I'm uh, the Joan R. Riley Endowed Professor and Vice Chair of Neurosurgery at UCSF, and I co-direct the Spine Center. You are listening to Interview with the Surgeon with the Surgeon Agent. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Interview with the Surgeon. Today, we welcome Dr. Praveen Mamaneni, co-director of UCSF Spine Center and the Vice Chair of the Neurosurgery Department. Doc, how are we doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for being with us. So, you know, getting started, what were your goals and aspirations during your residency and how did those change throughout your fellowship? Yeah, I think, um, interestingly, during my residency, I thought I would go into vascular neurosurgery, but then uh, found out that I actually love spine a lot more. And uh, so I, I kind of pivoted in my residency towards spine and had some wonderful mentors at UCSF, Phil Weinstein, Larry Pitts, who um, guided me towards spine. And then I did a fellowship at Emory with uh, Reg Haid and Rusty Rhodes, and um, they were really wonderful mentors and really taught me a lot of things I didn't learn in residency uh, about how to do a clinical practice, build a practice, and um, uh, and uh, you know participate in academics. and And so that's how I ended up doing becoming a spine surgeon where I am now. So, kind of taking us through that fellowship year, you know, what was your mentality heading into your first job search, and how did that perspective change in the beginning years of your career? Well, I kind of knew during my fellowship that I wanted to do academics. Um, you know, I went in with that perspective and I came out with that perspective. So I only looked at academic jobs. I did in, end up interviewing around the country um, and because uh, I didn't know where I wanted to be. And um, so, you know, I had come from San Francisco. I interviewed back in San Francisco uh, at UCSF and they uh, interviewed me at Emory and asked me to stay. And, and the other place that I was considering pretty strongly was University of Michigan. Uh, at Ann Arbor. And those are the three that, you know, kind of at the end is where I was really looking, um, you know, for family reasons and for, you know, issues of having great mentors at each of those places that would help the career along. Um, and it, and it, I looked at other places too, but they weren't a good fit. So I think it's important to find a good fit and then to narrow down choices and then to really discuss the choices with your family and see where you might want to end up living. So kind of taking us through your career, you know, what was the journey like on becoming the vice chair of neurosurgery at UCSF? So I actually um, didn't take the UCSF job straight out of fellowship. I ended up staying at Emory. Uh, I stayed there for about five years. And, and, uh, and I did that because my senior mentors who were, you know, my fellowship directors kind of guided me through the early part of my attending years. And I think it's important to note that uh, probably two thirds or more than two thirds of people who come out of a neurosurgery residency will not stay in their first job more than five years. So people will typically get their boards. They, you know, understand that uh, what they thought a job entailed and what it really entails, maybe two different things and they move. And so I was part of the, the statistic after five years, I went back to San Francisco um, and I learned a lot of things, you know, in my first job that I didn't ever have any exposure to as a resident or a fellow. Uh, and then once I learned those things and, and what I really want to do with my life, I, I kind of made a move. And I think a lot of people end up doing that. So I think it's important to understand your first job is probably not your last job. Um, this is something that I actually talked to with Mike Wang on a double ANS blog and, and podcast as well, that your first job is really not your last job. You got to really think about where you're going to be in five years is likely to be a different place and where you're going to be that first five years. Um, you know, you have to build on uh, stepping stones that'll, that'll help you later along in life. What would you say were some of the keys of your success that shaped your early career as you climb to the top of your industry? Uh, I think some of the keys were uh, doing, being reliable um, and, uh, you know, being, when patients were referred, you know, you got to be affable, you got to be available, you got to be able, the three A's. Um, I think those are really key elements. And, and if you're reliably showing the three A's to your referring physicians and to your patients, you'll end up building a very large and, and, and really good practice. Um, and if you don't execute well and you don't build your reputation when you're early on in your practice and you start off on the wrong foot with a bunch of complications, that reputation carries along with you and really makes it difficult for you to flourish. Now, as the vice chair, what advice do you have for the graduating chief presidents and fellows entering the professional job market for the first time? Yeah, I think it's important to look at your first job as just that. It's your first job. It's not your last job. And I think it's important to pick a first job, not just based purely on salary, but based on what's going to help you later on as a stepping stone to the next state and phase of your career. And in neurosurgery specifically, you don't get your boards usually done for about four or five years. You're not even a full member of the AANS for four or five years um, because you're not board certified. So I think uh, really looking at that first job as yet another phase of training, not like a residency fellowship phase, but still as a phase of training is important. 
uh, and understanding that you're going to need mentors in our first five years, because suddenly you're out there by yourself. No one's looking over your shoulder and tough cases come along and you have to have a way to navigate those. And sometimes it's easier to navigate those if you have some senior partners with um, uh, some background and, and, and some knowledge of, of how to navigate those, uh, you know, heady waters. Um, it's helpful to you. Now, as we dealt with the pandemic in 2020 and still now in 2021, what advice do you have for the graduating class regarding the networking and outreaching process when they didn't have the ability to meet folks like yourself at annual conferences? Yeah, this is really, really a good question. It's quite difficult to do that networking with Zoom. Um, you know, we're interviewing residents right now um, with Zoom, 20 minutes, right? 30 residents, 20 minutes a piece. And then we have to pick someone that we're going to train for seven years. That is not the best way to do things. I mean, you know, you get so much more out of meeting someone in person, shaking their hand, which no one does now during a pandemic anymore, looking them in the eye and having a chat with them. And, you know, I get a lot more out of that than a 20 minute Zoom where I feel like we superficially covered a bunch of stuff and I'm on to the next person. Uh, and I think it's the same for the, on the other side of the fence, you know, the applicants, they don't know if they want to work with me or our faculty at UCSF after chatting with us for 20 minutes in series. Um, you know, they never got a flavor for how the place works, what the case types are. Um, you know, each, each place has its own sort of environment of learning and its own environment of patient care, even its own environment of, of malpractice risk. And I think you don't just get a sense of that through Zoom. And I don't think there's any good replacement for in-person when you're trying to move somewhere and live there. So I think for those of you who are trying to get a job, you know, if you've gotten vaccinated, you really ought to think about going out and looking at it with your feet on the ground and not pick it on a Zoom. Now on that topic, I'm just curious as a vice chair, what type of things you're looking for as far as candidates for a residency spot or for a fellowship spot at your program? I think, you know, going back to what I said before, reliability and the three A's. I think if you have those elements, um, availability, affability, and ability, and you're reliable, I think uh, those are, are characteristics that are going to um, be um, something that we look for in residents. So I, I would stick with that. Now, can you talk about your involvement with the Congress of Neurological Surgeons? Uh, so I'm the vice president for the CNS currently. Um, I was a treasurer, so I've been um, working with that organization for a long time. Um, and, uh, and it's an organization that helps, uh, you know, people in the young in their practice who are transitioning to careers. Um, and there are several other organi organizations in neurosurgery that do that as well. Um, and, you know, there's multiple sections between the AAAS and the CNS, depending if you want to be a spine person or a vascular person or a tumor person, you know, each of these sections is very good as well. And even the AANS does help people um, in the young year, through the Young Neurosurgeons Committee to try to look at uh, things like what we're talking about. Now, with uh, this year coming, we're hoping that the event's going to be in Austin. What type of things are you excited for to get out there with the real conference this year? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm missing all my colleagues and friends. We've been doing everything virtual now for more than a year. The last uh, series of meetings have been canceled due to the pandemic. Um, and so, uh, you know, we've done some stuff, uh, my colleagues and I on Zoom, but it's, it doesn't replace the in-person uh, interaction. And so I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully seeing everybody in person uh, in the fall. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Interview with the Surgeon. Until next time, stay focused and keep following your dreams.